Here's a quick and easy tutorial on how to make a boring shonen. Step 1. Create a protagonist that has a somewhat interesting but mostly generic design. Step 2. Give him a really vague goal that has no end in mind. Step 3. Give him a bland best friend who also has no real goal. Step 4. Throw a girl in there. Step 5. Peak fiction? It's your boy the Hot Rodster here and today I am reviewing what is possibly one of the worst shonen anime I have ever watched. Orient. This anime was adapted from a manga of the same name, which was created by Shinobu Otaka. She has also created Magi, and I still need to watch that, I'm not gonna lie. I've only heard good things about that series, so I was inspired to watch this new anime adaptation for the winter season. And to my surprise, it was completely terrible from start to finish. I heard that later on it gets better, and that was somewhat true. The last arc was definitely more enjoyable than the first two. Unfortunately, trash that has only gotten a little bit better is still trash. In this video, I'm going to review the first season of Orient, arc by arc, and tell you about why it sucked, but also about some of the good characteristics in this anime. But before I get into that, make sure you hit that subscribe button to see more of the Hot Rodsters anime reviews in the future. But with that being said, let's get into the video. The introductory arc for this series is known as the Tatsuma Town Arc. It is three episodes long, and it is where the audience got introduced to the protagonist, Musashi, and his bland best friend, Kojiro. The problem with Musashi is that he had no clear motivation for his goal, which is killing ogres, or Oni if you will. I foolishly assumed that he was motivated by a desire to be free from Oni tyranny, or just by pure revenge, but I was clearly wrong. When the band of Bushi came in to slaughter the Kinshin, Mushashi wasn't excited to be liberated. He was sad that he couldn't get the kill. That response from Mushashi trivialized the entire situation, and it made me realize that he has no true motivation. He just thinks that killing Oni is fun, and that is why it is his goal. A protagonist with no underlying motivation is very difficult to root for, and I completely understand why people would choose to stop watching this anime after the first three episodes. Kojiro was another character in this arc. It seemed as if he would become a rival for Musashi, either that or his moody companion. Again, the problem with this guy is that he has no real goal. He didn't even want to become a Bushi, but he went along with Musashi for reasons. He even said that he wasn't sure killing Oni was a life he wanted, but he also said that he did want to follow his friend. I actually thought that was somewhat cool at first, since I believed that finding his purpose was going to be something that would be worked on throughout the entire series. However, it was basically resolved in one episode, and that removed any of the interest I had for this character. So far, it's not a great start for the protagonist and the side character. One great feature about this arc, and really the entire anime that stood out, was the art style. I'm not talking about the animation, as that was definitely subpar, but the actual designs and art was beautiful. I'm kind of like a goldfish, as I am really attracted to bright and vibrant colors. If I turn my brain off, I could sit back and just take in all of these gorgeous designs. Unfortunately, my brain is almost always on, so not even these masterpieces of art could distract me from the glaring flaws in this anime. Alright, let's move on to the next arc, the Kosameda Bushi arc. This arc was only two episodes long and it started off kind of strong with the introduction of a new female character, Sugami Hattori. I really like the focus she got in this arc because it allowed further insight as to who she was as a person. At this point in the story, I felt like I really knew and connected with Tsugami more than I did with Musashi and Kojiro. The manipulation and emotional coercion that she had to go through made her a more sympathetic character. However, with all of that being said, this arc was definitely rushed. It should have been slowed down so the audience had more time to connect with Tsugami's suffering. It felt like I was just getting started to empathize with her story, but then the whole issue got resolved in like a single episode. Honestly, episode 4 was fine, but episode 5 moved way too fast. They barely even took the time to show how Musashi and Kojiro broke out of their prison. The resolution of this arc just had very little build up and therefore there wasn't much to invest in. This honestly could have been an amazing arc, but its quick pacing just made it bland. The previous arc also had a pacing problem as well. It moved so fast that I just couldn't empathize with Musashi's trauma of feeling silenced. I don't know if this is a problem with the overall story or if it's just an adaptation issue, but whatever it is, it definitely made this entire experience less enjoyable. Let's move on to the last arc of the season, the Daito Mine arc. This arc was 6 episodes long, and it was by far the best arc of the season. It was still bad, and there is a lot I'll be criticizing, but that doesn't change the fact that this was the most well put together arc of this season. One problem that this arc did not have was a pacing issue. It felt like the whole arc from start to finish was actually paced perfectly. Almost every episode had appropriate cliffhangers that actually made me look forward to watching the next episode. Sugumi was also a very interesting addition to their little bushy band. 
I really wasn't feeling Musashi and Kojiro's chemistry too much, they just seemed like two boring, generic characters doing boring, generic things, but the group chemistry between Musashi, Kojiro, and Tsugumi was hilarious. There were many moments that had me dying of laughter. Shiro was another character who was introduced in this arc, and he was definitely an interesting villain. He was a bit eccentric and had unclear motives, but that just made him that much more compelling. Even after finishing this season, his reasons as to why he wanted to attain the Obsidian Goddess remains unknown. His mysterious nature and raw power grabbed my attention for sure. However, I am not sure how I feel about Musashi having the Obsidian Goddess within him. Actually, I know exactly how I feel about it. I really don't like it. While I am curious to learn more about it in the future, it seems as if Musashi did absolutely nothing to deserve this power up, yet he got it anyway. A common shonen trope is that the protagonist gets random power ups, but usually those ones are foreshadowed in some way. This one was just too random and too soon. I don't even have a good grasp on what this power system is like and we're already moving on to power ups? All we know is that different color auras can do different abilities and that red is a very rare aura. The power system definitely needs more depth in order to make it fun and interesting. However, as much as I dislike the concept of the transformation, the design of it was actually quite amazing. I also didn't really like the sword trial aspect of this arc, mainly because the opening spoiled which sword Musashi would eventually wield. It's kind of crazy that he used that sword and is shown having a red aura throughout the opening despite the fact that all of this information only gets confirmed in episode 11. This season is 12 episodes long by the way. This isn't specifically a problem with Orient as most anime have massive spoilers in their openings, but I feel like I just had to mention it. One thing this arc did very well was revisiting Musashi's backstory. This is important because the protagonist's backstory is the foundation of the series, and the foundation for this series was kind of shaky. I like this backstory as we got more insight as to who Musashi is as a character, but this backstory was definitely not enough. Because despite this backstory and spending 12 episodes with this dude, I still don't have a solid grasp as to his motivation. I don't know why he does the things he does, but the fact that we revisited some backstory was very good as this implies that there will be more revisiting in the future. Overall, this series was definitely a bit of a mess. If you asked me to sum up the entire series in two words, I would say that it's bland and boring. I would be pretty comfortable saying that this is one of the worst shonen series I have ever watched. Shonen is all about hype, but the lack of interesting context even made the hype moments fall short. I heard that it gets better later on, which is something that most manga readers say when they know that the story is crap, but I think that this time it might actually be true. While the season was definitely atrocious, it did get progressively better with each arc, and episode 12 looked like the beginning of a new arc. And I'm not gonna lie, I'm already pretty interested. But that's one of the main problems I've noticed with this anime. Each arc starts off somewhat interesting, but then it ends up turning into a huge disappointment. Nevertheless, a second core has already been announced, and it is scheduled to come out in the summer of 2022. After watching this season, I can't say I'm excited to watch the next part, but I am willing to give it a chance. Hopefully, I won't regret it. If you like this video, consider watching another one. I talk about a variety of different topics on this channel, so I hope to see you there. This has been the Hot Rodster. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.